This lesson will be covering fractions, which are a math subject that causes the most trouble with students going all the way from junior high all the way to the end of high school. Many students don't ever master the fraction, and what happens is, uh, is later in their high school career, it really comes to bite them. By the time you get to pre-calculus, um, if the student is scared of fractions, you're going to start getting long multi-step problems of which a fraction is just a small part, but not the main part. And that's when, when students uh, tend to melt down or get overwhelmed. So I just want to go over this once and for all. Um, if you can learn what's in this lesson now, you'll never have to think about it again. Okay, so we're actually going to start with multiplying fractions because that's the easiest thing you can do with them. Okay, when it comes to multiplying, all you got to do is multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. You don't need common denominators, none of that stuff. Simply 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 5 is 15. Now, you'd always want to check to see if you can reduce the fraction. In this case, you cannot. So that's all there is to it. So for multiplying, you should multiply across the top and the bottom. One thing that you might see that causes students some grief sometimes is if you have a fraction multiplied by a whole number, like a non-fraction, so two-thirds times five. Okay, well, all you gotta do in that case is turn the non-fraction, the five in this case, into a fraction by putting a one underneath because five divided by one is five. Didn't change the problem. Then we just proceed as above. Two times five is 10 and three times one is three. Again, we wanna look for reducing whenever possible, but again, in this case, uh, it is not. Okay, so multiplying is easy. Next. Uh, we'll move on to division, which is only slightly more difficult. Um, all you got to do, uh, if you have, say, two-thirds divided by four-fifths, is we keep the first fraction the same. We just recopy it down. Uh, we switch the division to a multiplication, and then we flip the second fraction over. So instead of four-fifths, I'm going to write five-fourths. And that's it, basically, so you flip the second fraction, and now we're multiplying, and we just learned how to multiply. That's easy, right? So in this case, we have 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 4 is 12. Now, in this case, you can reduce. Um, basically, when reducing, you just want to try and think of a number that divides evenly into both the, numer the numerator and denominator. Okay, well, if they're both even numbers, we know that 2 definitely goes in. So uh, 2 goes into 10 five times and two goes into 12 six times, so we get five, six. Okay, so if you can multiply, you can divide. Now, before we move on, I always like to, at Alexander Tutoring, it's very important that we know why the rules are the way they are. So it might seem a little arbitrary that we just flip the second fraction and multiply it. Why would we do that when we're dividing? So that's a question I'd like to briefly address now. And so I'm gonna do it just by throwing something out there. Uh, a question I would like to ask is, Forget fractions, forget everything we're doing, just use common sense. What is one divided by a half? That is, how many times would a half fit into one? Wait for it. Most students can figure out that a half would fit into one two times, just common sense, right? If I have two cups, one's half full, I would have to pour two half full cups in, into the empty one to get a full cup. Okay, so let's see how the, 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 the math keeps track of that. So I just said one divided by one half. So we just used our logic to understand that um, uh, half fits into one twice, but let's see how the, the rule keeps track of that. So uh, I'm going to change the one into a one over one. We're going to change the division sign to multiplication, and then we flip the second fraction over to get two over one. Okay, uh, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, two over one is two, which is the answer that we got um, just from using our logic. Uh, so that, that you can kind of see why we're flipping that second fraction. Let's do another, another one. Uh, I often I now like to ask, like, how many times would one-third fit into one? Just use logic, no math. How many times would one-third fit into one? Pretty obviously, the answer is three, right? You could take, th if you had a glass that was one-third full of water, it would take three of those to fill up an empty glass. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. So we're gonna make the one, one over one. We change the division uh, side into a multiplication side sign. Flip the second fraction over to get three over one. 
equals, multiply across the top to get 3, multiply across the bottom to get 1, equals 3. Okay? So you can see the math does uh, the work for us. It gets us the result that we thought about. Now what I'd like to ask is, okay, 1 third fits into 1 three times. How do you, many times do you think 1 third fits into 2? Just using logic. Most people can use their logic to figure it out that, well, it'll be twice as many as before. One third should fit into two six times. Let's see how the math keeps track of that. So we have two divided by uh, one third. We turn the two into a fraction by putting it over one. Change the division sign to multiplication and flip the second fraction as before. Two times three is six. One times one is one to get six, the answer uh, that we look for. So I hope you can see now why the rule is flip the second fraction and multiply, okay? Um, it's very important at Alexander Tutoring that we know the why behind everything that we do. It's not enough to just memorize a rule, okay? Finally, let's move on to, ironically, the most difficult thing you can do with fractions, which is add and subtract them. You'd think it'd be the easiest, but it's not. Because this is the case where we do need the common denominator. So before we jump into that, I want to just kind of get into some logic here. Um, I'm going to draw some pies or pizzas or whatever. Okay. The first uh, pie here, I'm going to cut into thirds. So both pies, uh, we'll say, are the same size. Uh, the, the circle is the same size. But the first one I'm going to cut into thirds, and the second one I'm going to cut into fourths or quarters. Okay. Now, if I said that I wanted to add um, two thirds, So what's two thirds? It would be the pink region, right? And I want to add that to say one fourth. One fourth would be this. So that's the visual. Let me write it in math terms. Uh, let's see. Okay, so what I want to try and figure out is two thirds as diagrammed by the um, pi above plus one fourth as illustrated by this guy. Uh, now, looking at the pies, it's pretty clear that we don't have three of anything, right? We can't just add the two pink ones to the one blue one because they're different. It's like saying I have two pencils and one pen. I don't have three of anything, right? So what we need to do is basically cut the pies so that the, 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 the slices are the same size. And that way we can add same size slices together. How do we do that? I'll show you. So. <clears throat> See the three here in the denominator? Uh, what we're going to do is steal that, take it to the other side, and we're going to multiply the second fraction by 3 over 3. What is 3 over 3? Well, it's just 1, okay? What is 1 times 1 fourth? Well, it's just 1 fourth. Point being, the maneuver I just did does not change the original problem, okay? We're still going to get the same 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. Uh, anyway, now I'm going to take the 4, the denominator from the other fraction, and I'm going to take it over to the first guy, and I'm going to multiply him by 4 over 4. You can see what that did is it guarantees that we get a common, the same thing in the bottom, right? Because uh, you can see we have a 4 times 3 in, in, the, in the first set of fractions and a 4 times 3 in the bottom. Okay, so pulling the denominator from the opposite fraction guarantees what we call a common denominator. Okay, and now we're just multiplying fractions, which is where we started, right? That's the easy thing to do with them. And uh, so that's no problem. So for the first one, we have 4 times 2 is 8 over 4 times 3 on the bottom is 12. Plus, for this second guy, we have 1 times 3 is 3 over 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, and now the last step... Um, what we do is we add the top numbers, um, 8 plus 3 is 11, and we keep the denominator, the bottom, the same. So that's our final answer. Now I just want to try and uh, do an explanation of this last step here. So what did we do? Let's go back to our pies. We started with 2 thirds plus 1 fourth, uh, and then once we... Uh, uh, did a little work here, we ended up with 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. Now, in theory, those are the same sizes as the original pi. So let's just take a look at that real quick. So what I'm going to do is break the new pi into 
chunks of 12, okay? So I'm just going to roughly look something like this. Okay, so there's 12 chunks, and I'm going to break the other guy into chunks, chunks of 12 as well. It's not my prettiest work, but you get the idea. Okay, in so 812, so I'm going to color that in on pie number one. We have, if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now, if you compare these two guys, look, you'll notice that it's the same amount of pie, right? Even though we chopped it up into smaller slices, it's still the same quantity of pie. And then similarly for the blue, uh, for the other pie, we'll get our blue back here. Now um, we're looking at three twelfths instead of one fourth. Let's see what that gives us. So I'm going to count up three of these twelve slices. Twelve slices. One, two. Three, and you'll notice it's the same amount of pi as one fourth. As we just um, decrease the uh, slice size. Okay, what's the point? You'll notice that in our two pies that we're trying to add now, uh, we we can add the slices together because all the slices are the same size. Okay, so in the first pie we have eight twelfth slices. In the second pie. We have three twelfth slices. Those are the same size slice, so we're totally welcome to add them together to get a grand total of 11 twelfth slices. A lot of students like to add the bottom number as well, but you can see that that would be wrong because that the bottom number says the size of the slice. The top number says how many of them we get. Okay, if you can remember everything that we did and learn how to do everything we did on this little lesson, you will be... So, in so much better shape for your entire high school career, and uh, you'll just feel way better. Things will go way smoother. Anyway, thanks for watching, and